All right, hello and welcome back. Um, this uh, video, I am going to be discussing this combat wheel for 1E, um, AD&D first edition combat wheel that I came across online from a website, mageofthestripedtower.blogspot.com. Had this AD&D first edition combat computer. Um, Looked pretty good, so I printed it out on some cardstock and I put it together. And it actually works pretty well and really kind of speeds up that first edition uh, lookup uh, table play stuff. So I thought I would uh, kind of show this off and kind of demonstrate how to use it. If you're playing first edition, this is definitely very handy on my own campaign. Um, using it, it is. Uh, a big help for com compared to just having things written out. So what you would do, uh, once you get it put together, like I said, there's three different parts. You print it out, you put it together with a, um, and I just used a little uh, brass tack thing in the middle. Um, and it was just as simple as that. Uh, printed out on some like thicker paper. I had some thicker construction type paper. Not exactly construction paper, but it was definitely thicker than uh, photocopy paper. Um, and it's uh, nice and stiff. And I glued the two sides together to make it even more stiff. And then the one, then the top section here actually turns. Uh, so what we have here is we have this arrow that points to the armor class you're trying to hit. There's uh, cutouts with the weapons. Um, and that corresponds to the uh, weapons versus armor table in the player's handbook. So those modifications you can make. Um, and really, it, it is pretty much that simple. So let's say, as an example, and this is the example from the website even, we have a wizard, a six-level wizard, who's trying to use his dagger to stab a, uh, a, uh, an opponent with an armor class of ten. So it's the first thing you do. It doesn't matter what they are, a fighter, a wizard, a rogue, a th you know, or a, th a thief, a magic user, a cleric, monster. Got the word rogue in there. Got a different version of D&D um, in there, but uh, a thief. So you just put the point the arrow at whatever that armor class is, armor class 10 in this case. And then right here, we look for the magic user. Six level points to this line right here. You see that pretty good, but six level. So we pointed this to 10, and this is six through 10th level points at this line. Follow that line right up, that takes us to a nine. Okay, so that's our basic number. I mean, that's the number that corresponds to uh, the magic user table in the dungeon master guide. So for that uh, six through 10th level wizard, Trying to hit armor class 10. I'll show you there, it is a 9. So that uh, number definitely matches. And then we can take it one step further then, because we know he's using his dagger. So we can kind of scan these little tables here and find there, and they are in alphabetical order, and find dagger. Dagger gives us a plus 3. So we're going to subtract that number. So 9 minus plus 3. Gives us six uh, would be what he would need uh, to uh, to get that uh, armor class ten opponent, um, and of course this uh, number here matches up to the player's handbook. The player's handbook uh, weapon types, general data, and two hit adjustments table on page thirty eight, and so looking at that. Uh, armor class adjustment for 10 for a dagger is, just as the uh, wheel showed us, is plus 3. So instead of having to look at multiple charts in the book, we can very quickly and simply flip through this wheel here to kind of figure it out. Now the same thing if a fighter, using a dagger, if the fighter, the 6th level fighter had been trying that, we'd go back here, 5 to 6. We'd leave that, that on 10. Fighter wheel is this orangish, reddish wheel or uh, line. Go back to 5 to 6. Gives us a 6 if he's using the dagger. That uh, gives us a minus a positive 3. Which So he would only need a 3 to hit that. Uh, 
to hit that guy if he was a level six fighter already. Um, so yeah, and of course that works all the way on down. Uh, so from a score of positive or a armor class of ten, all the way down to an armor class of negative ten. Um, one thing in, in the uh, player's handbook that armor class adjustment table actually only goes to armor class of two anyway. Um, so and kind of keep that in mind as you're looking at this uh, wheel here. Uh, they do have numbers that kind of line up in lower armor classes, but I am not, I think those might be other numbers that you're seeing and not the actual. So that'd be one in um, one shortcoming of this wheel maybe, but uh, otherwise it's a very, it's very nice to get the, it tells you what to do. Basically line this uh, black line up Subtract armor class adjustments from the two hit score, and it's just that quick and simple. On the back of it, there's a quick, few quick notes about recovery of spells. Um, so in case you uh, don't remember how spells are recovered, uh, there's some saving throws here for cleric, fighter, magic user, thief. So if you need to look up, a, you know, your player's uh, playing the fifth level cleric, needs to save against spells, you can just go, oh, you need to the save there is 14. Um, there's some other, uh, one ounce dose of poison, uh, can coat and how much poison can coat, uh, some stuff about dwarf and gnome constitution bonuses versus rod staff one and spells, uh, the turning on dead chart. And then there is some notes in the, uh, on the website there that they actually updated these turning on, on dead, uh, so that they are correct now. Apparently one time they weren't, but they fixed them. Uh, light sources, um, charisma scores, reaction adjustments for loyalty bonuses. Um, so yeah, it's a very nice, uh, uh, handy, quick, uh, little tool to make combat, uh, even go that much faster, especially if you're trying to flip through all those tables. So so obviously you want your players to write out those two hit tables, but uh, this is definitely boom, and away you go. Um, makes it so much faster and so much simpler. And you can actually use those armor class adjustments that I'm not sure many people actually use them, but they definitely add to the game. And, you know, they add to your weapon choice, because not only does your weapon speed come into play that way, um... And the weapon speed is not on here, which I kind of wish that it had been, but uh, but that you know the, your player is going to have that written on their uh, on their uh, chart or on their um, character sheet anyway. But uh, that would be the only uh, thing there too if, if if weapon speed had been available. But I mean, it's right there on the on the table on page thirty eight. You could copy that out if you needed to, but players are going to have that written down anyway. So. So yeah, that's just a real quick video to kind of show off this uh, fighting wheel that I'm starting to use in my first edition uh, games. Uh, so far it's been working really, really well. I'll put a link in the uh, description too in case anybody else is interested of where I found this. I did not make this, obviously. I made, I printed this out and glued it together, but I definitely did not make this, uh, this wheel or these tables or anything like that. I just... Uh, I just did the crafty bit to it and put it together, but that was that was the easy part. Whoever did this did an, an amazing job to get this uh, set up and get it right. So, so I guess that's all for today. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.